Hi. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Erica Kalinick. Is that how you say your last name? Very close. It's Kalinich. Kalinich. Okay. No, I have. Well, I have. I have the. Uh, I have a similar challenge. That the problem is when people mispronounce my last name, it can sound lewd very easily. You're lucky you don't have that problem. But all right, Erica Kalinich is a libertarian candidate running for governor of West Virginia. Her website, Kolenich, and that's K-O-L-E-N-I-C-H 4 F-O-R-W-V dot com is a, a great website. It says Maximum Liberty. Erica, thank you so much for joining us today on Adam versus the Man. Tell us about yourself and, and how you got into this race, please. Sure. Well, um, I'm not a politician. I feel like most libertarians say that the first time they're running. Um I was an independent actually until a few years ago, and my husband ran for attorney general in West Virginia um, as a libertarian. Uh, so through that, I got to meet a lot of people involved in the movement here in West Virginia, and um, the person who had gotten us ballot access by petitioning and then by um, getting the requisite number of votes in the governor's race. And he was very inspirational to me. Um, his name's David Moran, and he just explained libertarianism and liberty and freedom in a way to me that no one else really had. And I thought, oh wow, I'm not, I'm not an independent. I'm just a libertarian, and I didn't know that. So um, I decided to pick up his um, lead and run for governor. It's our ballot access race, so it's a, it's certainly a big splash, a big way to jump into the Libertarian Party and being a candidate is running the ballot access race, but it's been a lot of fun. Okay, so for people who don't know what that means, just for our, our not so politically savvy members of the audience, what do you mean when you say the ballot access race? Is this, this is the goal the party wants to get behind you to get a certain percent so we don't yeah. have to fight for every other candidate to, to file? That's correct. So in West Virginia, whether or not libertarians can be a recognized political party, whether or not um, their presidential candidate or, you know, down to their city council candidates can be on the ballot here in our state um, depends on one race. And that is the governor's race in West Virginia. There are no are no other avenues to that. So in order to make sure libertarians stay on the ballot in West Virginia, we have to get one percent in the gubernatorial election. Well, you know, that's actually relatively reasonable compared to a lot of things that the government does to keep or the duopoly does to protect itself from competition with the Libertarian Party. So that's 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 a very uh, you know noble thing to do to say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to put my uh, I don't want to say life on the line because we're past that phase. You know, yeah. we're very lucky to live in an age where you can say, you know, down with the king and, and not have your head cut off. Right. Right. Uh, and that, that, that is kind of what we're doing as, as the Libertarian Party, right? Challenging yeah. the, the heart of the current authority structure in the world and, and in the United States. So, the, you know, aside from that, what are your bigger goals with this campaign? My, my goals are really to just let people know there are other options out there. West Virginia, you know, most of our population here is very older, um, and they've only ever known Democrats or Republicans, and they don't even really have a good handle here on what the modern day Democrats um, and Republicans are. They just think they remember the days where wealthy people were Republicans, and if you were a working class man, you were a Democrat, and um, if you're if you're a Christian, you're a Republican, and that's really about it. They don't. They don't understand that there are other options out there and they don't really see that the two parties are the same thing. So really through my campaign, I'm just hoping to spread awareness to let people know in our state, it doesn't always have to be this way and there are other options. Um, I, I heard you right before I came on um, talking about energy and you know, West Virginia is a coal an oil and gas place and that's all they know here. So Republicans and Democrats just continue to promise the same things about those industries and how we're, you know, we're going to uplift those industries and, and, and that's going to carry us through. And that's, that's really been detrimental to people because they cling on to that and they don't have any other option. So I'm really just running to let people know that things can be different. There are other ideas out there. There are um, things other than red and blue. Now giving you the, uh, you know, heads up sort of warning here to put your politician hat on and be as politically correct and nice and, and butt kissing of your constituents as you possibly can. 
is is West Virginia a, a libertarian, you know, leaning state? Is there a strong libertarian spirit there where you're just able to kind of tap into that and and unleash it as a libertarian candidate? Or or do you have more of an uphill battle fighting a uh, a statist paradigm there? Well, it's it's a little bit of both. I will say West Virginia more so than some other places is very libertarian. Actually, our state motto is Mountaineers are always free, uh, which is, is very helpful. Running it would be nice if it were true. <laughs> it would be. It would be super nice if it was true. But a lot of people here um, do do like the idea of small government. They do like the idea of, of government not telling me what to do. They just don't understand practically how that's applied. So it has been easier maybe than it would be in some you know, some jurisdictions bringing the um, small L closeted libertarians out and letting them see the sunlight and um, see that they can become a registered libertarian. So our current governor, Jim Justice, was elected as a Democrat um, six months in, flipped to a Republican, um, brought Donald Trump to West Virginia, made this big deal about it. And so West Virginia, they just really love Donald Trump. And because, because Jim Justice is in Donald Trump's camp, Sometimes the difficult part is not not talking to them about libertarian principles, but convincing them that they can vote for me and not Jim Justice and get them out of their their Trump mentality. So issues wise, you know, your website, you have a page you're talking about gun rights and ownership, health care, criminal justice reform, taxes, environment, education why are those the ones that, that you're choosing to use to connect with voters in west virginia well those seem to be the most important things to voters in west virginia um first of all in terms of gun rights you know we are a hunting state a lot of a lot of folks here hunt it's part of our culture um, our state seal actually has two muskets laying at the bottom of it underneath the mountaineers who founded our state so gun rights are really really important to people here and um, it's it's just something that people are scared about. I mean, anytime you talk about red flag laws, um, anytime you talk about um, any types of limitations on the Second Amendment, uh, West Virginians don't like that. And I don't support any limitations on the Second Amendment. So it's important to let them know that. Um, healthcare is a big deal here in West Virginia. We, because we're a very rural state, you might have to drive an hour to an hour and a half to get to a hospital. And a lot of smaller hospitals are closing. Um, the reason that they're closing is, um, as I'm sure you know, the lack of a free market healthcare system has forced them to operate within the confines really in West Virginia of Medicare and Medicaid patients, which um, often isn't enough to keep them running. So we do have a bit of a healthcare crisis here in West Virginia in terms of our rural hospitals closing. And those are, there are things that West Virginia really needs to get ahead of. Um, and their, their problem, the healthcare problem is a problem that is unique to West Virginia because of our landscapes. I mean, like I said, you may drive 20 miles and it's going to take you an hour and a half because of the twisty, windy roads. So it's really important that we support the healthcare industry and make sure our hospitals here stay open. So Erica, I want to turn to a bit more of a, a personal question here. It, believe it or not, you and I have, have an sort of ironically similar educational background. Uh, you know, I, I you double majored at Wesleyan College uh, with in, in dramatic arts and political science. Uh, I, I mine was psychology and government, but uh, I, I did a lot of a theater people don't know that like I, w I was a big theater geek growing up I, you know every year and from from even elementary school middle school high school college i was in some major theater production so i you know i don't know if i'm reading too much into this but you know you attended law school at the university of akron uh you know a lot of people a lot of my uh a lot of my elementary school teachers said adam you're really good at arguing you're gonna grow up to be a lawyer aren't you <laughs> And, uh, but, but what's, what's the dramatic arts element to your background? How is that relevant to what you're doing now? Sure. Well, um, as you noted, my training is in theater. So it certainly makes it easier to talk to people. Um, if I get nervous, I just play character and it all goes away. It, it's, um, so it's, 
you know, and it's blessed me as a trial lawyer, which is what I do now um, during the during the day when I'm not running for office to pay the bills. I'm a trial lawyer. So it's made it easier in that regard in terms of the public speaking. Um, I'm still very, very actively involved in theater. As a matter of fact, um, when I first thought about running, one of the things I was nervous about was um, for three years, I was Janet in the Rocky Horror Show, the live version. So I thought, oh my Janet, gosh. Janet. <laughs> yeah, right? I thought, awesome. As soon as I tell people I'm running, the pictures of me in my costume or lack of <laughs> own, are going to be all over the internet. <laughs> that hasn't <laughs> happened, so that's good. But um, I'm still very involved in theater. And I think, you know, <clears throat> On, on a more serious note, what it has helped me understand is that there are so many people in West Virginia who are looking for um, an artistic outlet, a place where they feel like they belong. And through the theater, I'm able to create that and bring different types of people together, which I think will serve me well as governor of West Virginia. Well, you know, you're, you're not just a lawyer, the managing member of, of a law firm focusing on employment litigation. And, you know, when I think about American politics, the first thing that comes to mind is we really need more lawyers involved. Uh, do, you, do, you get, you know, do you get any heat for this? I mean, as a libertarian trying to stand out, like, I mean, part, part of this for me is like, wait, we have, we have like serious people with real careers, not just crazy performance artists running for office as libertarian. I, I know we've always, but I'm, I'm excited that we have someone who brings, you know, that, that professional credibility to the race, but you know, as, as, as an attorney, is there, is there some, how does that play in, in, in how you're received? Well, I don't, I think a lot of people are very supportive, which is nice. I mean, obviously the question I get asked the most is, well, why are you wasting your time running as a libertarian? Why aren't you running as a Republican or why aren't you running as a Democrat? And my answer is because I'm not a Republican or Democrat, so I'm not going to run that way. Um, so I do think because the law industry is, you know, fairly involved in politics in terms of the legislature, laws that get passed, um, laws that don't, and things of that nature, um, a lot of people just assume because I represent plaintiffs that I'm going to be a Democrat. So I would say probably the most heat that I take is from um, people in the industry who think that if I'm going to run, I need to be a Republican or a Democrat and explaining to them why I would spend time on the Libertarian Party and why that means something to me. So it, it does get a little bit awkward sometimes, but I, for the most part, people are supportive. And I feel very good. You know, the Libertarian Party is the only party growing in um, West Virginia, the only one. We grew by 2% just last month which is fantastic. So I would like to think that by running and talking to lawyers and professional people, hopefully I'm bringing more people into the party. No, that's great. I, I, I mean, what you're doing, it's kind of like, we got someone on the inside and she's bringing more, def I mean, you've kind of, it's like you've already defected. I mean, it sounds like the, the, the pushback you're getting is not so much from constituents. They're used to lawyers as politicians, but from the rest right. of the legal cartel is that is it fair to call it that the the legal establishment at least doesn't like sure. that you're breaking with yeah, hey hey if you're running for public office as a lawyer you're supposed to be running on strengthening the position of lawyers and as a libertarian you're kind of by definition doing the opposite of that right that's exactly right yeah so what would you say to, uh, to to people who are are considering volunteering for your campaign right now? People in West Virginia, why should we support you? Why does this represent a, a unique opportunity for the Libertarian Party right now? Well, it, right now in West Virginia, we're just positioned um, as libertarians to do so well. If you needed a better example of of you know Republicans and Democrats being the same thing, our current governor was elected as a Democrat. He is now running as a Republican, and nothing about him has changed. He's the same person with the same policies. So if you you know it, it we are poised to do well. Um, people are clearly getting frustrated and are clearly seeing in West Virginia that the two parties are the same thing, and they're looking for an alternative. So if you want to help me, let them know about me. And that's the biggest thing in West Virginia, right, is that normally the way that libertarians campaign is we're out there at fairs and festivals and parades and 
We don't have those right now in West Virginia. Everything is shut down. So our current governor gets all the TV time he wants because he does a press conference every day. Um, his Democratic opponent, my Democratic opponent is a millionaire. So he just pays for all the TV ads he wants. So I think that to know me is to want to vote for me. So I would love to have volunteers that, that just help voters get, get to know me and understand that I'm running. So I would love volunteers. Awesome. Awesome. Erica, and uh, what, what else, uh, other than your website, how do you want people to be able to, to connect with you? People can connect with me on Facebook. Um, that seems to be the platform that people like the most. Um, so they can check me out on Facebook at Erica Kalenich for Governor of West Virginia. Um, you can message me there. And um, when I'm not in court or representing folks, I'm normally pretty good at getting back to people. So I'd love to hear from anyone who just has a question or wants to know how they can help or just wants to tell me something they think I'm doing wrong. I mean, I'll take criticism. I'll take any communication you want to give me. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Erica Kalenich for West Virginia Governor. The website, Kalenich, Kalenich4, F O R W V dot com. Check her out. Sign up. There's a contact us there. If, especially if you're in West Virginia or any of the neighboring states, this is a race worth getting behind a candidate who can represent the party well. Again, Erica, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate your time.